Okay, today on uh, at SprinterWorld.com, we're going to show you some of the uh, more challenging parts of running wiring uh, in the Sprinter for uh, installing when you install a trailer hitch. Uh, get all your stuff that you need assembled. Um, this is a um, this is a tail light converter that allows you to connect to the tail light system without drawing power from the tail light system. This box uses the tail light uh, wiring as a signal to power the trailer lights, but the actual power that's coming going to the trailer is coming from the battery in the Sprinter, which is up front. So we're going to be mounting this uh, uh, module underneath the, the uh, Sprinter in the back and running a, a power wire up to the front. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do uh, in order to uh, make this installation possible is to pull the back tail light out. Uh, we're going to snake some wires down uh, to the um, area where this is going to mount. And that's got a, a couple of challenges of its own. The tail light's held in by three screws and some uh, little uh, pop clips. The first order of business is to take these three screws out, which you did already, with a Torx drive, T25. Uh, set the screws aside. We're going to use them uh, again to put it back in. Once the tail light is loose, you just hit this housing and it snaps right out. And here's the clips. And if you're, uh, if you're doing it right, you didn't break them. Now, in order to pull this connector out, there's two little clips. Releasing this wire from the housing of the taillight is accomplished by pulling on these little clips on either end, which I did prior because otherwise this camera would watch me fumbling and fumbling. So we release these little clips with an awl and pops right out. And we'll set the taillight aside. I'm going to run the wiring from the taillight down through this plastic plug on, uh, that all sprinters have. It's uh, near the spring perch. In this case, it's very close because it's a short wheelbase sprinter. But the uh, 170 wheelbase sprinter, this uh, plug is, it seems to be much further back. But you pop this plug out with a knife or uh, you know, a plastic putty stick. And uh, I started running the uh, snake already. I have a uh, nylon snake. And I run it. You can see there's an oblong hole inside and it runs there. In and up. You got to keep it running up. It's going to take a couple of tries, but uh, when you have a uh, helper at the top, uh, you're going to, um, uh, you can use a wire hanger too. Uh, you can push this up, you'll feel it go right into the taillight uh, cavity and you'll be able to see it from, uh, from up top. And that's where you're going to run your wires. You're going to make sure you're going to go through that oblong hole in there. We ran a snake from the bottom up and you can see it come out of the taillight cavity. Here's the taillight wires. Here's the other end of the snake that we ran up. And it's a lot easier to run it from the bottom up. If you're trying to run it from the top down, is almost impossible to do. So, like I said, after a couple tries, we got it. Uh, it came up, and we're going to strip back this cloth tape. Here's the taillight connector uh, that uh, is now uh, exposed without the taillight here. And the wires that you have to connect to are uh, right into the back of this plug. There's six wires you're going to connect to, uh, most of them. And you got to look at the colors of these wires carefully, because they're, they're very, very small wires. And the uh, colors of them are kind of similar, especially on a couple of them. Uh, so what we have is for the parking light, we have a gray wire with a black stripe or black trace. For the left-hand turn, we got a black wire with a white trace or stripe. Stop light is black with red. Reverse or backup is white with a blue tracer on it. And uh, don't forget, uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, for the ta passenger side tail light, it's a um, black with a green tracer, which you can get in any several one, one of several locations. One of the wires that we have to connect to for the trailer wiring is the right blinker wire, which is not accessible at the driver taillight. It's accessible on the passenger side. Now, this van's got a headliner, a finished interior uh, to a certain degree. Some are even more finished than this, but this one's got a headliner in it, and we're going to need to snake a wire uh, through the body cavity up and over from, from one side to the other. This uh, harness right here has the wire that we need. It's a black wire with a green tracer on it. And we're going to tap into that wire, and we're going to send the, uh, 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 that wire across and down and come out the uh, taillight cavity on the other side. We already ran the snake. It goes through pretty easily. Uh, and if, uh, if the uh, van did not have a headliner in it, the wires are accessible on the driver's side. That's the exception. There's a plastic duct, a black plastic duct, that all the wires going to the back of the sprinter are uh, contained in. And you can get to that uh, harness right up here. Uh, um, on, the, on the sprinters that don't have a headliner, so you don't have to snake it across. That on certain sprinters, especially those that have a full passenger interior, 
there's no metal exposed. So all of this has plastic uh, trim work on it, and none of these access points are, or access points are exposed, and it's a lot harder to do. So you still have to get to that wire on the right-hand side. It's a black wire with a green tracer on it. That's for the right-hand blinker. And you can access it by um, taking the taillight out on this side, just like we showed you for the driver's side, and then snaking this snake up and in and all the way around. You need a nice, flexible snake to do that. Uh, it's possible you could hit an obstruction doing that, and it becomes impossible to do. And then what, you, what, you, what else you could do is you can attack it the same way we did on the other side. Pull the plastic plug from the bottom and snake the wire up and then go, then go across and make your connections um, at the uh, module uh, from that way, either up and around or down and through the grommet. Now, when you want to get to the wiring on a vehicle that is uh, like a, a cargo vehicle that has no interior panels, this is a different truck than we were working on earlier, uh, you can get to the uh, wiring uh, in this back corner. You squeeze these little clips, you pull this back right off, and the wires that uh, we need are all right here. The ones going down to the driver's side, the ones going over to the passenger side. So you can attach to uh, uh, the passenger side wire, which is the black wire, once again, with the green trace or green stripe on it. Uh, we can get right here. And if you wanted to get to, to any wires back here that go down to the taillight, you can do that too. But everything's right here. I'm taping the green wire that we're going to use for the right-hand blinker uh, in order to pull it up and over to connect it to the other taillight. Uh, we've got a spool of different colored wire here, and each one of these colors has its own function. The green one is what we use for the uh, right-hand blink. And here we go. Okay, up inside this hollow body cavity, and we're going to connect to the black wire with the green tracer on the sprinter harness. This little squeeze tap or 3M connector, as it's called, enables us to connect uh, into the existing wiring harness with a new wire. This slides into this and this clamps on the wire without cutting, squeeze it together and the con connections are made. The thing you have to do with this particular type of connector, though, is protect it with an uh, uh, anti-corrosive grease called uh, dielectric grease. Uh, the container that it usually comes in will have a little bit of a, uh, a point to it. You'll squeeze that in. And you liberally put that in there. It's like a clear grease, but it has a uh, special electrical uh, uh, um, non-conductive component to it that's necessary when you use this type of connector. Now you slide this on the existing wire. In this case, it's a gray wire with a black stripe or black trace, as we call it. You slide the accessory wire, put your fingernail on it, pull it out, and you'll see that you're actually past this little metal clip, which is where you want to be. Now make sure you hold that all in place. Make sure that wire doesn't pop out like that. Okay, push it all in. And you're going to take a regular pair of Lyman's pliers and squeeze that down. Tug on your wire, make sure it's tight, snap that over and your connection is made. You see you got a little bit of grease that's squeezed out. It's exactly what you want to see to make sure that these connections don't corrode. These type of connections, uh, when we use with the dielectric grease that we, in, in, uh, we in, injected in there, uh, are generally... Um, uh, don't need to be taped up with electrical tape, especially since they're going to be inside the vehicle anyway. But uh, we don't tape them up, and we don't want to hold moisture in that. Uh, but in here, there's no moisture in it, so you don't have to worry. But where you will use tape uh, is on this snake. This, this is the snake that's going to pull the wire down, and we taped it up with uh, electrical tape. Uh, you'll see that we brought the tape past the edge of the wire to kind of taper it. So when you're pulling this thing down through tight uh, areas, it won't get hung up on the edge. We also folded the edge of the electrical tape off, so when you get it down, you can, un, un, uh, you can unpeel it and, and, and throw it away. Now, this purple wire that we supplied this harness is a little bit longer than the rest of the wires. The reason for that is that's going to go down and go all the way over right to the um, uh, seven pin plug. Actually, it's a seven with a four. This thing's really neat. Seven and four. Very, very cool. And we got the connection. This is going to plug in to this, uh, inverter this converter box down below, and then we still have some wires uh, that we have to connect. Heavy white going directly to chassis ground, nice clean connection. Uh, we got uh, the black wire going to this plug that's going to have 12 volts back from the battery, and the um, blue wire is the uh, electric brake control, which in this particular van uh, isn't getting, but if the electric brake control was installed in here, you'd be connecting that wire back to that so that uh, all the terminals would then be live. Uh, in the seven pin plug and also the four pin. OK, 
Okay, so we plug the uh, plug back in. The harness is snaked. Plug is tight, and we're going to put the uh, tail light back in. No tools, no nothing left in there. No rolls of tape. Everything's out of the way. Now, you got to be careful about getting these wires back into that hole. Make sure they go in there, and there's nothing hanging up because there's a gasket here that you want to make good contact. Set the light in, and then swing the door around. Hook it in place. And you got the three pins. You can see where they go. You just slide the light into place, line up the pins, and push it in. And then we're going to put the three screws in. Running this wire forward from the uh, hitch forward, this jacketed cable, this gray jacketed cable that we're supplying to you, has two conductors in it, and you're going to run it along the frame. Right now I'm laying right in front of the rear tires looking up at the, uh, the fuel tank. You're going to run that wire right along the frame. You're going to screw in these wire clamps uh, right into the frame with the self-drilling screws uh, in a convenient area. Just be mindful of moving parts and such. And you're going to run it through body uh, frame holes and right along these two brake lines here you're going to run the, this cable right above the tank and shove it right in that same little cubby that the brake lines are going and there's a space right above the tank you can push that cable right through and if you hit an obstacle just twist it and push it through and it'll come out right underneath the driver's seat uh, right where you want to be okay i'm laying right underneath the driver's seat uh, right behind the front tire and here's the cable coming right out from over the top of the tank it took a couple of tries, only two tries. I had to twist it and push it and pop right out where I wanted. Now, right above the um, uh, where the wire's coming is a um, rubber boot with a wire tie around it. You're going to snip this wire tie off, and then you're going to shove this cable right up through this rubber boot. And this comes right out from underneath the driver's seat. You're going to move the driver's seat forward. There's a little foam uh, pad underneath the driver's seat that you snap out of place carefully because you're going to reuse it and the wire comes right up underneath where you want it and your connections are uh, some of your connections are right under the driver's seat looking at underneath the driver's seat there's a little foam pad that unsnaps there's a little tab that's bent and then slide the seat forward and also raise it all the way and Hit the recliner knob and bring it forward. And if you pop this foam pad out carefully, very carefully, set it aside, you have access to the uh, to the connections that you need underneath the driver's seat. Underneath the driver's seat is are connections you're going to need. There's a little junction box with a lid on it. There's two little release tabs. Open that up, and you'll see three wires. The wires you're interested in uh, are the uh, the red wire, the thick red wire, and there's a black one with a yellow stripe on it, um, which um, the, the red one is a constant 12 volt power all the time. The uh, black with the yellow uh, stripe on it is uh, is a key power. You're really not going to use that on the um, trailer hitch installation, but it's nice to know you have that uh, for other accessories. The red wire, the wire you're interested in, is um, uh, covered by fuse number 10 in the fuse box right on the side of the seat. If your sprinter is going to have a 7-pin connector on the back, do not connect to this power wire under the seat. Instead, connect to the battery. Okay, right now we're going to pull the uh, floor mat out to reveal the battery location. We already took the screws out of this piece of trim. You'll see there's a little in, uh, embossed uh, figure of a battery. You take that off, set it aside, and then you pull the floor mat out. Set that aside. And we already loosened up the battery cover. Uh, to make this uh, easy, there's a Torx drive, uh, screwdriver 30, uh, T30 that loosens these up. Don't take the screws out all the way. Just uh, loosen them up, and then the cover comes right off. Like that. And there's your battery. All right, right now we're going to snake the uh, wire with the, uh, the jacketed cable with the blue tape on it uh, up through the back side of the uh, plastic trim. That's going to go to the brake control. Just let that hang out. Now we've taped the uh, two jacketed cables we give you. One has a piece of red tape on it, one has a piece of blue, and we tape them together and we're going to send that through this duct right here to the underside of the driver's seat.
Okay, we, we, we managed to uh, get the, um, the two jacketed cables that are taped together temporarily. Uh, the one with the red stripe and the one with the blue stripe. We, we sent it through the duct uh, and then up under the driver's seat. It could take a couple of tries. You got to wiggle it through to get it through. So we got those two wires, two jacketed cables, and we have the jacketed cable that's going to the back of the sprinter all the way underneath uh, along the undercarriage. Here's another view of the uh, wires uh, that we just ran, the jacketed cable. You have the one jacketed cable with the red stripe on it, red piece of tape. Both of these wires are going to go to the battery positive terminal. Uh, and we're going to put connectors on those in a second. The one with the, the jacketed cable with the blue wire, or with blue tape, sorry, is going right through the battery box. It's just passing through and then up underneath the dash. And we're going to connect this end to the uh, brake control, along with a couple other wires to the brake control. Okay, so we got the uh, yellow terminals, the two yellow terminals, one on each wire of the jacketed cable with the red tape. And they're, both of these terminals are going to go to the battery positive. 13 millimeter, loosen it, put it on, and put these terminals on. But you're not going to do that until uh, the rest of the wires are hooked up because you don't want any live wires uh, flopping around in the back uh, uh, and getting into trouble. Okay, for clarity, I put a um, piece of white cardboard down to uh, lay the... Uh, Cables. This this uh, view is from the back of the driver's seat, um, underneath the driver's seat where the cables, the jacketed cables are coming out. Uh, we have uh, the fuse. We have the the gray jacketed cable with the red stripe. Both of these wires are powered. They're going right to the battery with those yellow uh, eyelets. And on one of the uh, wires, you're going to have a circuit breaker, 20 amp circuit breaker. That lead is going to go to the black wire of the jacketed cable with the blue tape stripe. That's going to power the brake control. That's the power into the brake control. The other wire coming out of the jacketed cable with the red stripe has a, a fuse holder. Circuit breaker on this one going to the brake control. This one's a fuse holder going to the jacketed cable that we ran from the rear of the sprinter to the black wire. Now you notice these two blues connected. The blue coming out of the jacketed cable with the blue stripe is connected to the blue, the same color blue wire going back to the a trailer socket. All right, we just hooked up these um, uh, yellow terminals uh, to the battery positive connector. We loosened this 13 millimeter nut up, put the terminals on there, routed the cable, tucked it right into the battery box, and then tightened it carefully without putting pressure on the battery terminal. And all we have to do is snap this cover back into place and put the cover back on the battery. Here's your wire with the blue uh, tape stripe on it going up to the brake control. Here's a plug for the brake control. Red wire is going to the black with the red stripe on the A-pillar over here. The white is to ground over on the uh, bracket for the uh, accelerator pedal. The blue wire goes to blue. The black wire goes to black. The heavy blue to blue and heavy black to black. And then you're going to plug this into the brake control and the brake control will be uh, mounted on the dash here. Reinstalling this rubber or foam pad underneath the seat, just bend it up and then slide it right into place. And then just fold the little tabs down. And there it is, back in place. Now we're looking at where the uh, converter module is going to uh, be mounted and there are the wires going to it. There, the connections are made we're going to tape those up in a second but we'll get another look at the uh, module and where it's mounted uh, tucked up under the back corner. Uh, there's the cables going in uh, through the access hole that we uh, ran earlier with the, uh, that little red uh, uh, snake that we ran through and uh, then we're going to put the grommet back to protect that uh, access hole. With a, we punch a little hole in it with a half inch uh, hole punch and then we're going to uh, tighten up the uh, cable, uh, all the wires up underneath with uh, cable clamps. Nice and tight, up out of the way where ice and snow and uh, muck is not going to hang from them uh, and pull the wires out from where they're uh, connected.
Here's a view of the 7 and 4 pin connector hanging from the underside of the Sprinter step bumper. The cable coming out of the back of that connector plugs directly into the uh, converter module that's, uh, mount that we mounted earlier. Now you'll notice that the connector hanging from the step bumper is at a slight angle and that's uh, uh, done that way to let any moisture out that might get trapped inside. 